welcome to my talk. Um, I'm really glad I'm here. It's my first talk on a, in a conference, so um, please bear with me. Uh, I'm George Ben Maximovich. Uh, I'm from Eviden, um, and I'm going to talk about enhancing RAG uh, with Neo4j knowledge graph. So um, I'm going to talk about how to combine an LLM uh, with vector embeddings and uh, knowledge graphs. And uh, because I'm a uh, in public sector consulting, uh, as a consultant, obviously, you need good slides, and someone at my uh, company uh, made this amazing animation, <laughs> so <laughs> I thought I would add it here. Um, I'll uh, start by just saying, like, having one slide about Eviden, what we do. Um, so we are a large European company, a carve-out from Artos, maybe you've heard of them. We still have, um, well, Eviden still has 50,000 employees. Um, we operate worldwide um, and have the full, like the full breadth of uh, IT consulting, implementation delivery, um, etc. Um, I myself am working in the um, public sector consulting team um, here in Germany. Um, so that's my industry focus uh, and I'm currently uh, researching robust and secure machine learning and uh, on the other hand I'm um, yeah, I'm, I'm researching how to uh, make generative AI more grounded in factual knowledge, uh, and yeah, that's how I came across uh, this idea. Um, the agenda for today is going to be um, first a short overview about LLMs and RAG, because you've probably heard this a couple of times already. Um, then um, a short intro to knowledge graphs, what they are, how they uh, relate to this topic of search. Um, and I'll also talk about the particular use case that, um, that, I, um, yeah, that I prepared for this uh, talk and uh, that we're going to see in the live demo at the end. But before that, I'll talk a bit about uh, RAG with the knowledge graph. Um, basically, I'll focus on two techniques there. Um, and then in the end, we'll have some some time to um, for questions and and answers. So we'll start with the overview of uh, of LLMs and RAG. I mean, oops, uh, LLMs are very. <laughs> they are of course, uh, yeah, everyone's heard of them since ChatGPT came out. Uh, at least in the bubble of IT. Uh, everyone knows uh, GPT, everyone has probably used it. Most people are actually using it, uh, well, at least occasionally for work, uh, to summarize, to uh, give an outline, to brainstorm, etc. Um, but when it comes to the, the public sector or enterprises in general, there are some limitations that um, make the use of just a pure LLM um, yeah, error, like problematic, um, because they were trained mostly on internet data. They uh, lack specific knowledge. So if you have proprietary data and you ask it about it, it won't know the answer. But when you see the hallucinations, it might actually tell you something and it'll sound very convincing, although it's complete and utter uh, bullshit. Um, the same is for knowledge cutoff because they were trained on data, and at some point they, um, yeah, they had to like stop feeding the LLM. There's usually a, ti a point in time from when they can't answer questions, so they can't answer questions about um, about current topics, for example, the European election, etc. Because then it'll answer about the European election five years ago, because the current one isn't uh, in the data it has seen. Um, if you want to fine-tune it with your own data, that's very expensive and uh, there are lots of papers that show that it doesn't help that much. It is good for um, getting like the, the grammar and the style into the LLM, but it's not that good of getting the, the actual data into the LLM. So it'll probably either you, you'll... Uh, you'll lose the capabilities of the LLM with uh, general reasoning or you won't really get uh, 
get proper answers that relate to the data you've fine-tuned on. Um, and by on their own, they also can't really explain where they get their answer from. Um, and which is still with RAC important, uh, they are very sensitive to uh, input phrasing. So in comes retrieval augmented generation. Um, that's some technique to actually help uh, the LLM um, overcome those limitations I just, uh, I just told you about. Um, the idea in general is we have a database, some in, in whatever form, usually it's a um, vector database, and you retrieve, um, <coughs> you retrieve context from this uh, database that relates to the, to the prompt or the query that the user gave it. Usually, um, yeah, usually you have, um, I mean, you've just heard about it. Uh, you uh, have a database search which works like this. You have the question, you turn it into a vector. You've already turned all the text in your database into vectors. And uh, those vector representations have been learned in such a way that they are, um, when they are similar, very similar, the distance is small, then the text should be similar. So that's how you uh, find nearest neighbors. You put this information you retrieved into uh, a prompt for the LLM and then you generate an answer. Um, but this has also some uh, shortcomings and that's where uh, my talk com is, comes in because you normally just retrieve, you don't retrieve all the documents that could potentially fit. You have a cutoff of say, 10 documents that you take. Um, so then if you ask the LLM, hey, how many documents are in my database? You retrieved 10, and it'll tell you, oh, there are 10 documents in your database, although there might be like a million in there. Um, or it, it can't really reason about multiple, um, multiple or across multiple um, documents. So a question like, what is the most common topic it also won't be able to really answer unless there's like one document that has a summary of all the other documents. Then it could uh, answer that. The same with how many documents are there. If you have a document that says, hey, in the database there are a thousand documents, then it could potentially answer that, but uh, it can't answer it on its own. So I'm going to talk uh, about knowledge graphs, what they are, and then later come to um, how they help in this case. Um, so a knowledge graph basically encodes um, knowledge in a formal way. Um, so you have concepts or entities of a certain type. For example, here you have, uh, you can't see it, but for example, you have uh, a source that published an article and this article contains chunks of text. Um, exactly, so they are related by certain types and you have a schema basically of uh, those relations and types and both relations and sources can have attributes. For example here the source has a name, a type, um, so in, in this case it's an RSS feed or something else and a URL um, and um, those knowledge graphs have to be stored somehow and a natural way to store it is um, in a graph database because those are, um, um, well, they are made for graph data um, which means they instead of having uh, tables uh, like a relational database they have nodes and relationships, and those relationships aren't just stored as uh, foreign keys. They are stored as proper, uh, en like proper um, entities in the database, and both can have uh, properties. So that's the property graph model. It's very intuitive to model this kind of uh, database schema because basically you just draw those, uh, those circles, you draw lines between them, and you uh, put the names of the types uh, and the labels, etc., on them. Um, and it's also quite intuitive to query. There's a, um, um, a language very similar to uh, SQL 
um, which is called Cypher. Um, for those who are interested in it, there's also now uh, an ISO um, format, which is uh, GQL, so graph query language, um, which is um, a, a subset of Cypher. Um, so for example, here, if you wanted to uh, get all articles that were pu published by the source Tats, which is a German newspaper, you would say match, source, published, uh, you have basically an ASCII art pattern, and then you specify a where clause to uh, filter, and you return the, the title of the article, for example. Um, and one example, and this example of the database, I'm using Neo4j. Um, there are others like Nebula, Graph, uh, etc., but uh, Neo4j is, I think, the market leader um, still, um, and um, that's why I chose it. Um, the, the use case that I have, you've already seen the data mo model uh, on the slide, uh, is a graph of news articles. Um, it's multilingual um, because I crawled German and British news sites and then um, ingested them into the, into the knowledge graph. So that leads me to how we perform RAC on this knowledge graph. Um, there's a very nice uh, uh, graphic from uh, an employee of Neo4j, actually, um, which gives a broad overview of the idea. It's very similar to normal RAG, I'd say. Um, you have a question. Uh, the user ask, asks a question. Um, you hand it over uh, to like an LLM in... Well, uh, yeah, some, some agent. In our case, uh, I'm using Langchain um, for the agent. Um, you embed this question into a vector, for example. Then you can do a vector similarity search uh, on the knowledge graph because we've already... Oh, in in the uh, those chunks, I've also encoded them uh, as as vectors, so we have uh, embedded text in there, and then we can, for example, uh, get all related notes uh, from these chunks. So we can hop to the article, we can hop to the source, etc. Uh, perform a graph traversal on uh, around this um, retrieved node, and then we uh, put this question and the relevant uh, retrieved information as context uh, into the LLM, and the LLM then generates an answer. Um, and in our case, uh, I've used uh, Snowflake Arctic um, as the LLM because uh, I'm in, well, as I said, I'm working for uh, public sector clients, and for them, in Germany at least, it's very important that um, that it's open source, that you can actually audit it. Um, it usually has to be hosted on premise. So um, that's why uh, often like open AI uh, you can't, can't use, especially, especially not for sensitive uh, information. Um, so that's why I tried out Snowflake Arctic, um, which you could potentially host in your own, own database. Um, an alternative, uh, Alternative to uh, performing vector sim similarity search and then getting um, getting data, or getting the nodes that are around the retrieved um, node, you can also um, turn the question that you uh, that you asked into a cipher query. The cipher query then retrieves nodes and relationships, so data from the knowledge graph, and then you put that uh, retrieved information into the, uh, the LLM as a context and generate an answer. So that basically, uh, you have two options here how you can integrate the knowledge graph, either by vector similarity search and then graph traversal around the uh, retrieved nodes, or by uh, cipher query generation. Um, so what are the steps, um, or what are the topics that uh, we have to uh, consider here. First, we need to get the data into the knowledge graph somehow. So I'll talk about uh, the knowledge graph creation. Then I'll talk a bit more in detail about the vector search with graph traversal. And I'll talk about uh, 
I'll talk about the limitations of that as well, and then I'll talk about uh, query generation in the end. Uh, and those I'll have in my live demo as well. Um, starting with the ingestion. Um, so first we'll crawl some, some news sites. Um, there's a very uh, nice uh, um, web crawler called Fundus. It's actually from HU Berlin, so from the Humboldt University here in Berlin. Uh, it's extremely easy to specify what kind of newspapers you want, uh, and then you basically, uh, I'll have it, I have it here, you basically have it in, like, that's basically all you need. You import it, you specify the publishers you want, you can also specify it more in detail. So if you just want articles from the TUTS that I mentioned earlier, you could say Fundus Publisher Collection DE and then TUTS. Uh, you instantiate a crawler and then you just crawl and you uh, can do something with the articles that you retrieved. Um, so the next step, in my case, uh, I wanted to extract entities uh, from the chunks. I used the zero shot uh, named entity recognition model. It's also quite new. Um, so you see, I'm, I'm, I, I've used this talk as a prototyping uh, uh, opportunity, um, testing out different uh, technologies. So Gliner, um, it works really well. You just specify labels that you want to extract and it uh, extracts that. Um, and then I put that into the data model as well. I embedded the text of the articles. Or I in actually embedded the, the paragraphs um, as chunks. And then I stored everything uh, in Neo4j. Yeah, and we've already seen this. And then once we have the data in uh, the database, we can uh, perform a vector search with graph traversal. So I already... Uh, talked a, a little bit about this. We have a query. Um, we embed this uh, as a vector. And then we have uh, a lang chain agent um, and a chain, basically a pipeline, um, that looks in the database. It retrieves, um, it retrieves nodes from the database that, are, that have a similar embedding. Um, and you can also uh, traverse around it. So you can say, hey, wait, here, going back to the, to the uh, data model. So you, are, you have the, the, the chunk here that you retrieve, but you can also say, hey, uh, I want a retrieval query. So for example, I want all the um, entities that are mentioned in, in the text, or I want uh, the article title as well and the publishing date, or you can say, hey, I want to know uh, who authored this article. You can say, hey, I want to know uh, what news site actually published it. And then um, you can get all this data into the context. You could also do multiple hops. So for example, you can uh, get one chunk, uh, and I've encoded here the position or the section of the uh, article. And then you can say, oh, uh, I want to like go back to the article, and then I want to retrieve uh, all the chunks that are close to uh, to this uh, chunk. So the one previous, the one after it, uh, or you can do very uh, fancy stuff like, hey, I've retrieved this chunk, but I also want uh, chunks that mention the same organization, for example. So you can uh, do lots of things. Um, and then, oh, there's a slide missing. So the other, the other alternative um, would be, hey, you have a query that's a natural language query, like, um, for example, uh, list all the sources in the database, or what sources do you uh, have, uh, or what sources have published between uh, 1st of uh, June and today. Um, but then you need to inform the uh, LLM what date is today, because it doesn't know by itself. Um, then you would uh, turn this um, this natural language query into a cipher query. You use an LLM for that. So basically there would be another step here, generate query with LLM. 
you uh, retrieve this information from the database. Um, you put it then back into the LLM and the LLM generates an answer. So those are basically the two, two options you have. Um, and then now I'm going to actually show you uh, a live demo of this, the three topics that I mentioned earlier. Um, Okay, so I'll start with the crawling. Can you all see this or do I need to uh, increase the font size? It's all good? Ju just a little bit? Okay. Uh, I think it's... I haven't thought about this before. Um, now it's better, right? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so... We import everything that we need, uh, and then that's what I've shown you before. Um, we bas basically uh, crawl the news sites. It t takes a while. Uh, here I've specified max articles too, because otherwise, obviously, it takes longer. Um, and I'm also not putting this into the database now, because uh, that would take a while as well. Um, but the idea is, um, um, so you have the article, uh, you get uh, some data, so you have the title, you have the text of the article, um, you have the URL, you know where it is from uh, and when it was published, basically. And those are like live. Uh, oh, yeah, that's a pity that uh, we have <laughs> this information now. Um, this happens in live <laughs> demo. Um, so now what we can do is um, we can also uh, perform some queries. Um, so we instantiate a news graph client. Try this again. Sorry, I should. Yeah, I mean, I must have information. I'll just check this for a second. Sorry. Let's see. This is a... Uh, oops. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> it, it's it's the it's the free version anyway, so uh, <laughs> so nothing should happen, and I'll change it afterwards. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay, so let's see if this works now. Oh, maybe. Oh, maybe it's not in the kernel, that's why. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, ah, did it work now? No, it didn't. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, well, the thing is, uh, you would only just see some records, so uh, it shouldn't be that, uh, that bad. Um, what we can also do here is we can uh, have the entity uh, finder. Um, as I said, it's a Kleiner model, uh, also open source. Um, and then you have some articles you can uh, find the articles um, or the entities in the article, then it'll uh, find the entities. Let's see why this didn't work. Huh. Yeah, five minutes remaining.
So I think this tries to download the model now and apparently the uh, connection isn't that good here. The, the problem is, I mean, I've already done this, so there's, uh, you already see the, the results here. Um, but now that I've tried to do it again, <laughs> the results are gone. Um, so I'll just continue. Basically, you, you get some, uh, and I'll put all the, the code on GitHub later, and I'll also upload the slides so you can actually um, see it later on um, when there's a better connection. Um, so uh, let's talk a bit about one uh, solution. Um, that I mentioned, you can up, you can uh, query the <coughs> the vector index and then get um, uh, get a graph traversal around and retrieve the information around this. So, for example, uh, you could uh, yeah. So Langchain has an integration with Neo4j. Uh, you basically instantiate. Um, the Neo4j vector uh, index here. Uh, it's just a couple of lines of code. You need to specify an embedding model. I used uh, Jaina AI, uh, AI's model for that because it's uh, quite good for multilingual data and I have both German and English data in there. Then you can specify a question, for example, what does the RFD want to do? Um, obviously, uh, this is inspired by current news, lots of EU data, then you retrieve some, uh, some documents, page contents, you can see there's lots of data in there, um, lots of text, but you also have the meta metadata, for example, you have positions, you have categories and so on. You can also uh, perform a, a hybrid search, um, so combine a full text search with keywords and um, and uh, the embedding that gives you some other information here. I, in the second one, I don't think there's anything, there's anything about the RFD, but uh, this was uh, retrieved by keyword. It's just funny. It's probably because RFD is ch just a small uh, um, uh, word. And uh, this is the interesting part. You can also specify a query, a retrieval query. So you basically say, hey, you get the node uh, with the vector. So that's basically a chunk. And then you match uh, all, well, you match the containing article and you match the source. Then you, uh, you concatenate the title with the text and you have some metadata as well. So where in the uh, article it is, what section it belongs to. You get the category, the publishing date, uh, a URL, a source, and then uh, you can put this into the vector index. You can also perform a similarity search. And then you say, um, yeah, then you get just, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. then you get some other. For example, now you have the information that it's from Ruhrnachrichten, you know when it was published, so two days ago. Um, and then, that's the last step, you have uh, the Snowflake um, model, the LLM, which is just Arctic, um, and then you can, there's one uh, retrieval QA that's uh, offered by Langchain, you can put this in there uh, and you can retrieve it then you get the answer. The RFD wants to focus on draining the EU parliament, etc., etc. I mean, that's to expect it. The RFD is right wing and uh, against the European Union, which is a pity. Um, but what I did, I, uh, because this, uh, uh, this retrieval QA from chain type, um, is a little um, uh, yeah has a, mm, some limitations. I uh, also use the graph cipher QA chain, and then 
<coughs> that's out of the box uh, <coughs> and uh, the the problem with that is that for example if you ask it about Ursula von der Leyen uh, it thinks ah I want the author so that's one limitation that you have there for example uh, coming to the query generation as an alternative <coughs> because uh, here also you can't ask global things about uh, about uh, the uh, the corpus, right? You can't ask how many documents are there. <coughs> In this case, you also have the model, um, and then what I uh, do is I specify a generation template. You get the schema into it. You uh, first uh, retrieve the entities that are mentioned, and you perform a full text search about the entities. So you have some leeway with misspellings. For example, if you say Ursula van der Leyen instead of von der Leyen, etc. Uh, you can still retrieve it and get this as uh, as a context to the LLM. Um, then you have what news are there about Vault. You can uh, generate a cipher query with that. <coughs> you get ah no, that's uh, just the context. You have lots of uh, retrieved. Uh, organizations here, Volt Bündnis, for example. You generate cipher prompt here. Uh, you get match C chunk mentions the organization where the name is in Volt, Volt, etc. So those are the ones that we retrieved earlier. Um, and return C text. And that goes into the, uh, into the context then. <coughs> so the context is all of this basically concatenated. And then you ask the LLM to generate an answer. Um, and this is the answer that it generates in the context provided. There are yeah, some information about Vault. Uh, they participated. They have quite a nice result. Um, and uh, especially compared to the percent of votes before. And then there's a summary. And that's it, <laughs> my live demo, and now we have some room for questions. <laughs> Thank you. Questions? <coughs> oh, yeah. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Uh, do you have some tips to make this vector retrieval process more accurate? The vector retrieval... Uh, in what in what way? So uh, let's say I have one query to match, and this query needs to be matched with. So I have one million documents from that. I need to find top n. So uh, do you uh, follow some text cleaning on top of it, or, for example, do you um, do we also need to make sure that the query needs to be long enough so that it has enough tokens to match? as compared to my query only has Nike shoes and yeah. it will be more noisy. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, <coughs> uh, that's an entire topic uh, in itself, right? You can, you have, uh, there was just a talk about um, some techniques, how you can improve rack in general. Um, <coughs> and there are some things you can do about it. For example, that what you mentioned, uh, you can, you need to think about uh, what typical query size you have, and then the chunk size should usually match this in a, in a way, and then you can have a chunk and uh, retrieve like the, the chunks before it and after it. Um, but there are, yeah, uh, it's, it's not the main focus of, of this talk. I think uh, if you watch the, the talk that was uh, before this one, uh, there are probably some, some good ideas how to, how to improve that. Thank you for the talk. Great talk and impressive demo uh, in the face of adversity. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, yeah. I got questions on the prompt engineering that you're doing. I uh, noticed two places where uh, I was not surprised, but interested to know more. One is when you do the uh, uh, query generation, you have an advanced prompt with few short examples. Mm -hmm. And the second case is when you do the prompt asking to generate the final answer, you say reply in appropriate details. I'm curious how you arrive to these examples and to this clause. Have you tested with, without? Is the string we see just the output of a process by yourself? Or is this a first try that works great? Um, so it, it really depends on the LLM. Um, I, I think if you want to use this in production, because I, I, this is not production ready, right? Uh, you have to keep this in mind. <laughs> um, 
if you if you want to use this in production, you need a really uh, large language model, especially for the cipher generation, because it's a hard, it's a it's a difficult task to generate uh, like a, a good. No, the the syntax is fine, but it needs to understand uh, the entities and their relations, and that's difficult, I think. Um, so, for example, that's why I took the the topic as an entity type out of the data model because I realized uh, that instead of looking for entities, it was always looking for topics um, because it mixes that up. Um, yeah, your question was uh, wh how did I come to the uh, to the um, to this prompt? Um, I basically tried out several types of queries and then I realized how huh, okay this is some some mistake that's natural to make if you don't really understand the schema that well and uh, the semantics of the schema so I gave it some examples uh, and for example the the thing about appropriate detail uh, in in the beginning uh, before I had this in uh, it basically just answered uh, very concisely which is a pity if you have a question about uh, actual text. But on the other hand, if you have a question like, how many documents are there? It, I mean, it doesn't have to ramble on, hey, there are uh, 10 documents, so I need to uh, look into the database to see how many documents there are. Uh, there are 10 documents. Like, you just want a short answer in that case. Yeah. Time for one more question. Very specific question. Um, you you are using Gliner for named entity recognition. Um, I had never heard of it. So, uh, what's the are there advantages uh, compared to the space models? Faster, better mm -hmm. quality, or whatever. So, yeah, Gliner is uh, it's it's a very recent model. It came out or it was published uh, this year. It's I basically wanted to try it out, but it is uh, state of the art uh, or it has state of the art performance for. Uh, zero shot um, named entity recognition. Um, it actually compares, like, wait, it is on par almost with uh, ChatGPT for entity recognition, uh, and it's very, and it's very, like, it's very small, right? ChatGPT, like, OpenAI's uh, LLM is huge, and this is based on BERT, uh, on BERT so it's very, very small. It's zero shot. But obviously, I mean, I, I don't know if you've seen uh, the the entities that I've extracted. It, it makes mistakes, especially in the uh, in the yeah, it, like in zero shot regime. So if you want to f really use it in production, you should uh, have something that's uh, few shot and that's fine tuned on your specific uh, domain. It's no, it, it's it's a uh, it's a bird transformer model, so it's uh, discriminative, but uh, yeah, but a transformer model. Um, and you basically just specify a list of labels that you want to extract. Yeah. That's all the time we had for questions. For th so thank you again, Georgia. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks.